All right, in this video, we're going to look at another example of solving a higher order polynomial. In this one, we're going to have to actually use two methods. And let me just first start by writing down the equation. And the equation we're going to work with is y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 20x. Now with this one, we have to factor the common term out first. And if you look through, you can see all of these terms have an x in them. So let me rewrite this as y is equal to x times the quantity 2x squared minus 3x minus 20. All right, once we get it down to here, we just did some standard factoring for that first step. Once we get it down to here, this part that I'm underlining right here, we're going to apply the AC method to. So again, recall that a is equal to 2 and c is equal to negative 20. We always have to remember to bring that negative sign with it. So then when I look at my value of ac, that's equal to a negative 40. So again, with the ac method, remember we're looking for products, products that equal negative 40, and sums. And actually, in this case, it's going to be differences because it's negative, but it's essentially the same thing. So we're looking for uh, differences that equal negative 3, okay, that middle term. So what we want to do is we want to start off with just going through. And like I said before, if you're a beginner, you might want to just start off with 1 times um, 40, okay, and we'll work up from there. And since this is negative and this number is negative, the larger number in this multiplication always has to be negative. So 1 times negative 40 is going to give us negative 40, and 1 minus 40 is going to give us uh, negative 39. All right, the next one would be 2 times a negative 20, and that's going to equal negative 40, and 2 minus 20 is going to equal negative 18. All right, the next one we look at, 3 doesn't go in there evenly, so 4, 4 times negative 10 is equal to negative 40, and 4 minus 10 is equal to negative 6. And you can see we're actually getting closer when we're looking at those differences. So our next one should do it, but we'll check. Um, 5 times a negative 8 gives us 40, or a negative 40. And then it would be 5 minus 8, and that's equal to a negative 3. And when we see this negative 3, we notice that's our middle term right there, and that's what we want. And this product of these two numbers right here, that gives us 40 according to the AC method. And now, before I start writing stuff out, it might be helpful to write this out like this. y is equal to x times some quantity there and some quantity there. Well, one thing we know for sure is this 2x squared, to get this, one of those terms is going to have to be 2x. And that means the other one has to be a positive x. So that's taken care of. So 2x times x would give us 2x squared. And remember, when we get this uh, middle term right here, it's going to be this times this, 2 times whatever number is there. And then this next middle term is this number times that number right there. So when we look at this, we can't just plug 5 and 8. Those aren't the numbers that necessarily go in there. But this 8 comes, if you remember, from that AC value. We multiplied 2 by the negative 20 um, to get the AC value. That 8 has to be broken down. And since this is a positive 2, this is going to be a positive 2 here. That negative 8 is going to be a negative 4. 2 times a negative 4 is what gives us 8. That's the breakdown of that. Okay, now we just have to plug in our numbers. Since we have to multiply 2 times that negative 4 um, to get that eight, negative 8, this 2 times, we'd have to have the negative 4 over here. And that means the 5 has to go over here, and this is going to end up being positive. Okay, so that's our first step for factoring this. And the reason we want to factor it is we want to find the zeros of our equation or the roots of our equation. So we set y equal to 0, and we can say x times 2x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 4. That whole thing is equal to 0. Now we break it down because each individual term here could be equal to 0. So x could be equal to 0, that first term. 2x plus 5 could be equal to 0. 
and x minus 4 could be equal to 0, or all of them could be equal to 0. Now this one's pretty easy. If we have x equals 0, that's just going to be the ordered pair 0 comma 0. Okay? And remember, I don't like writing these as x equals 0 is one of our roots because to me that's a vertical line. Okay? This is a, a specific point on the graph. The next one we have to do some algebraic solving, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And we have 2x is equal to a negative 5. We divide both sides by 2. And we end up with x is equal to negative 5 over 2. And again, this would be um, negative 5 over 2 comma 0. That would be the ordered pair where it crosses the x-axis. And then the last one, this one's pretty easy. We just add 4 to both sides to solve this equation and we end up with x is equal to a positive 4 and the ordered pair that we're going to graph is 4 comma 0 so that gives us our three roots or three zeros of the equation in other words that's where the line crosses or this curve crosses the uh, the graph or the x-axis okay and just to do a quick rough sketch of that I'm going to draw my y-axis right here and I'll draw my horizontal x-axis right here and we can start off. This is going to be the point 0, 0, 0, 0. And our point uh, 4, 0 right, might be right there, 4, 0. And negative 5 halves is uh, negative 2.5, so maybe right here. So negative 5 halves, 0 is right there. And remember, since this leading term is positive, it's going to start from the bottom and work its way up. So our curve might look something like this, where it goes up, comes down through the origin, and then comes back up through that point 4, 0. So this is what that graph, or a rough sketch of that graph, might look like. And it's, it's pretty easy to uh, sketch out and do. And hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to solve this and I know I don't talk about checking this but one way we could check to make sure we did the right factorization is to multiply or expand this whole polynomial out right here so I'll leave that up for you to check but uh, yeah if you just expand this you'll be able to see that this actually equals our original equation up here hopefully this helps you in your studies and good luck